Hello everyone and welcome back to Driver's Therapy. Today we're going to be talking about the GT4. We're going to give you an update because I've had this car for almost two years. I think in March it's going to be two years, but it's been amazing. So this is my first like official, real like full-blown sports cars. Now don't get me wrong, all the cars I've had before have been really cool, but I feel like this one was on a whole different level. And when I bought it, the crazy thing is, is I never drove one. I just read all the hype about it, read all the reviews and all the, you know, journalist reviews and all that. And I just knew that it was one of the best driver's cars. And, um, and I kind of took a risk on it. And I remember picking it up and stalling it out and also running the front lip into the little big old humps that they have at parking lots. It hurt that day when I did that. But the crazy part is, is that we drove this back from LA back to here, Grand Junction, which is about seven hours, actually more than that. I think it's like nine hours or something like that. And it drove amazing. I was worried that the carbon fiber seats were going to be too harsh, but the car was just on a whole different level than anything I've ever driven. Now, the crazy part is, is that I've been making a lot of videos about the S800, about the NSX, selling the Supra, and I really haven't talked about the GT4. And I think that it's because if you think about it, what do we see in the news? We see things about drama, uh, you know, personalities, celebrities, all the stuff that's going around geopolitically. But really, we don't hear about countries that are doing well or staying low key or just, you know, doing, doing your own thing. Well, I kind of feel like that's the same thing with this car. It's just been awesome. Like literally like everything works and, um, and it just drives amazing. I mean, when I hear the flat six, now I know you guys have driven a lot of cars and you've heard of, of flat sixes, but the flat six motor in this thing is just sounds amazing. It just, it sounds aggressive. It's intoxicating and it's really cool, but it's just been so, you know, such a good car. I just get in it, I go drive it and then I park it and th the experience is there. And not only that, like I like to tinker with things, modify things, add things, but this is a GT car. And the crazy part is, and I'll talk about that here in a bit, you know, it being a GT car, it's done. Like these wheels, I love them. They look great. They match the car. I personally don't think you need new wheels. The brakes, these are carbon ceramic brakes. I always talk about them. I always use them in phrases that I tell people. Um, and essentially, I'm always talking about how expensive they are because I think it's so cool and it's also scary. Um, but the brakes are the best, uh, the body, the lines, you know, the aero, the addition. You know, Porsche GT3s, GT2s, GT4s, they're just pretty much done out of the box. And I have loved that because I just get in the car and I just enjoy it. Now, as far as maintenance goes, the only thing I had to do was I had to buy quick jacks. And the reason why is that you just, the car, the way that it sits and suspension, you really just can't jack it up. It's just the, the suspension fights you. Um, and essentially the quick jacks just let you do oil changes, which I've done a couple oil changes in the car and lets you do any of the immediate service. Like you could do, uh, you could replace spark plugs. You could even replace the exhaust. Um, you could do quite a bit of things with the quick jacks. So maintenance wise, this has been great. Uh, now, one of the things that did pop up is the clutch like return line for the fluid, uh, it, uh, it could leak. So I bought that preemptively because uh, one of the guys who does a lot of maintenance on his car and he posts some good videos, he talked about that. So I bought that hose because I think that will happen one day is they will leak, but I wanna have that on hand. And one of the things that is scaring me is that I live in a small town and these tires are gonna to have to be replaced sooner or later. Now, tires on most cars, you know, have to be replaced sooner or later, but higher end performance cars, they have to be replaced a lot sooner and the tires are a lot more expensive. It's like they know the what they're going for and the dimensions, it's like they tax you for it if that makes sense. But the crazy thing is I can't take this to discount tire or anywhere else. I love discount tire, don't get me wrong, but I can't take this anywhere else and here's the reason why. 
If you want to replace the tires on this car, you have to remove the wheels. If you remove the wheel and you damage the rotor, each rotor is $10,000. I want to pause for effect. 10 grand per rotor. And they're not like your steel rotors that if you chip them, because they have fibers and the designs, the carbon and the ceramic and all that, like if you chip them, they like crack or they something like that, like they're done and they have to be replaced. And as you know, any shop that's doing it is gonna fight that tooth and nail because they're like, we don't wanna be responsible for that. So essentially when it's time to replace the tires, I have to remove the wheels myself and then put them in our truck. Luckily we have a truck and then take them over and then make sure that they don't damage the wheels and put the tires on. Now that doesn't sound too bad, but that's just one of those extra steps you have to take with a car like this. And it's just one of those things that um, you have to be careful with. Now I am a master tech. I've been working on cars forever. Um, so I could do most of the maintenance myself, you know, brakes, oil changes, spark plugs, anything that the car needs immediately. The great thing about these cars is that with such low mileage, they don't need a lot of things. I think the 20,000 mile service is spark plugs. Somebody already did this. When I bought the car, they already did that service on, a, on the 20,000 miles. So that is great. Um, essentially, I've thought about what else am I gonna do to this car? And that's the crazy part why I've been telling myself like there's not a lot of content. Well, I thought about a couple of things. They're not real big, but that's the thing. It's the car is pretty much done. Um, I don't like to do POV videos because they're just a pain in the butt. You're driving with this big old GoPro in your forehead. And uh, it's just, in my opinion, I just, I just don't like those videos. So I'm not going to do them. It's just, it's just not my thing. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just happy with this car. And you really can't ask more for a, a car in this category. Now I am all about, you know, I'm trying to be a big YouTube star one day and, um, and, I, and I essentially love doing all of this. I enjoy cars and stuff like that. But this is literally my first high-end car. Now this is over six figures. And not only that, it has increased in value, which is super cool. And majority of high-end cars will do that. Like in, that, in this category, the value of these cars just keep going up, which is super cool. So the only thing is, is that you have to take in consideration that the miles is a big factor with these type of cars. That's the only thing that could really impact the resale values if you put a ton of uh, miles on it. But besides that, they go up in value. Now I have thought about selling it for a Ferrari F430 and because that's the next car that I want. Um, I have another car in queue that we're going to get, but then as far as the next car that like I want for myself, it's going to be the Ferrari F430. But, um, but then I told myself, here's one of the things about these cars when you're buying a really big expensive car that a lot of people don't know about is that, yeah, you could get away, well, not in this environment anymore with the Fed and the geopolitics and all the geo, uh, economy that's going on. But back in the days you could get away with, you know, financing a hundred grand for 2% or 1%, depending if you've got those type of connections, but typically two to 3%, most likely 3%. But one of the things you can't run away from, and this is just one of those things that when you see people with high end cars, you gotta, you'll probably look at them differently because this is one thing you can't run away from is the taxes. If you buy a hundred grand car, and you go to the DMV, especially here in Colorado, it's like 8% or something like that. You're going to have to pay about $8,000. Like you're going to have to pay that. That's not, can't go around it. It is what it is, right? So that's eight grand you have to pay. So whenever you're buying high-end cars, unless you are doing something crazy like a dealer's license or you're not titling or you're doing something probably that you're not supposed to be doing it, you have to pay that price. And to be honest with you, I love this car. It's amazing and I've already crossed that hurdle. We've paid the taxes, you know, the car is pretty much, you know, we, we own the car as far as like the taxes goes and as far as having gone through that big initial hump of getting it, insuring it, understanding it, maintenance. And it's that big curve that you essentially have to pass uh, in order for you to pretty much have a high-end car in, in these categories. Um, if I were to get an F430, they're about 120 to 130 grand. I'd have to pay another $9,000 in taxes. And then there's another learning curve as far as the maintenance goes and everything. I will end up doing that, but I don't, I'm not going to trade out a, in my, in my opinion, a process that's already completed. Like 
the cook I've already situated with the car. I like it. I've kind of got it dialed in as far as as far as the maintenance goes and uh, and how I like to drive it and how I like to use it. Now I don't use this car to shop. I don't go to dinners with it. I don't leave it anywhere. It's simply for me like one of the favorite things that we like to do is we like to get donuts. We get in it, we drive across town, which is kind of far, which we like, and I go through all the paces. It, it makes my heart pump and I love every second of it. And Elise goes in there, she gets the donuts. I stay in the car, she comes out, and then we drive it home, it gets in the garage. You know what? To some people that may, might be like, oh man, you don't really use it. I don't, I have the NSX. And we have the uh, S800 here coming up, and we also have other cars for other purposes. But essentially, this just gives me a huge rush, and I love it. So this is gonna stay here, and to be honest with you, I'm really not gonna do much with it. It's just one of those cars that I love, and it's just all about that driving experience, and I love it. Well, that's pretty much about it. Well, no major plans besides if we have to replace the tires, and, um, oh, one thing I might consider doing, but I think it's kind of a waste of money in my opinion, and so it's probably not gonna happen, is that they have a carbon fiber trim package that, that goes to like the GT2s, 3s, and 4s, and you could have got it. It's, so this car has every option you could get it for the GT4, which is Porsches are all about their options, and has every option except one, and that's the carbon fiber trim. It's a small little trim piece. And I'm just thinking, how cool would it be to say that this car has every single option, but at the same time, that little tiny carbon fiber trim is like two grand. So I don't think it's worth that at all. And, uh, but essentially that's about it guys. It is true at this point in time, Porsche is just a turnkey car and you just enjoy it and they look beautiful. And, um, and I love that about it. Uh, but one day I think um, this car is gonna stay but definitely I'm um, gonna try out the other uh, uh, big car names, um, but I'm really thinking that Porsche brings uh, a lot to the table as far as the performance and so far the reliability, the aesthetics and the quality, so I love it. Well guys, let me know what you think. I uh, just wanna give you guys a quick update about it and uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, we have a lot of stuff going on and uh, we'll see you soon.